So you're considering making a move to Merritt Island, Florida. Well, don't unless you can handle these five things. I'm excited to share this list with you today. After living in Merritt Island for the past couple of years, we've learned a thing or two about what we like and also what we don't really like. And I really wanted to share this list with you today. The thing I wanted to get into with this list here is what are the things that can wear on you after you move to Merritt Island or might deter you from moving in general? You'll obviously see these lists all over the internet. If you haven't, I've done many pros and cons videos. I will link those down in the description below. So go check those out. I would strongly encourage you to do that. But we've learned a thing or two. You move down and you might be bright eyed and bushy tailed and you're so excited to move to the beaches and the sunshine and you just can't wait to do that. And then you come down and reality hits you. And just like it does in every other place in this country or in the world for that matter. You know, every place has its pros and cons. And while this is not a pros and cons video today, I do want to talk about the things that are not necessarily everyone's favorite and may not be yours either. I want to start this list off with the obvious elephant in the room, and that's weather. With all that beautiful sunshine, it comes with a little bit of a bumpy road from time to time. We're in a subtropical climate here in Merritt Island and in Florida. In general, we are known for having some pretty strong tropical storms. We also have the potential for hurricanes. We have been extremely blessed in Merritt Island that we don't typically get hit directly. By the time any storms hit us, they are typically just tropical storms and not hurricanes. Another reason for this is our location on the East Coast. Hurricanes that form in the Atlantic Ocean often move from the East Coast or curve north before hitting Florida. So we're somewhat shielded from direct hits, but we are not immune from hurricanes by any means, which can definitely worry people. I still get worried every hurricane season and we have insurance and we have a plan to evacuate if we ever need to, but it still makes me a little nervous sometimes. Aside from hurricanes, it gets really, really hot here in the summer. And I'm sure you've heard this story before. And I think it's such a good way to really kind of get a sense of what the Florida summers are really like. Because if you're somebody who doesn't like extreme heat, I don't know if Florida is really for you. You're definitely going to want to take that into consideration because during the summer season, and we call it rainy season, but basically July, August, and September, it's hot and it rains and it rains every day and that's almost a hyperbolic but it's pretty close and so much so you can basically set your watch to it it will rain midday almost every day during that time period and if you've ever been anywhere where it's 90 degrees and the sun is always shining and then you get a humongous storm what happens is the humidity just keeps building up every single day now, one thing I would say is we do get a breeze here, which helps a lot. The Atlantic Ocean and the rivers here supply us with some wind that helps a little bit. I can't tell you how many times I have clients fly into Orlando, and then when they get here, they say, oh my gosh, it feels so much better here because of the breeze. Even places like Tampa don't get breezes like we do in the summer. It really makes a difference, but it is something that you need to take into consideration if you're considering making the move because we do have those hot weather days, but we also have the awesome weather like we're having right now. At the time of this recording, it's December and we actually just had a storm this weekend, but just some heavy rain, but that's actually pretty rare this time of year. Next week, it's going to be 60s and low 70s which is actually kind of chilly for us. We are all in jackets and long sleeves this month, which is so funny to me because when I lived up north, low 70s would be a beach day. I was talking with my client. She's under contract right now, and she said the mornings are 30 degrees in Pennsylvania right now. So I definitely don't miss those mornings, and I know she won't either. So for me, the trade-off for amazing winters is the warm weather. And I love my AC in the house, and it works really great. And so I don't mind the hot days because I've got amazing AC. But my best friend in the world, she loves winters and hates summers. So if you're that type of person, Florida may not work for you. All right, the second thing on the list today is cost of living. Now, at the time of this recording, Merritt Island is still recognized as being less expensive than the national average in terms of cost of living, which is awesome. According to salary.com, we said 2.3% below the national average which is pretty cool. I'm gonna pull up some stats here in a minute so you guys can look at this versus maybe other areas you're considering moving to, or maybe the area where you currently live. 
I think it's something to take into account. We have seen a rise in housing prices over the last three years and insurance prices have risen. Now, one question I get all the time is, are we going to be able to get insurance? And the answer to this is yes. The only case where you wouldn't be able to do this is if the house is falling apart, the roof is very old and so forth. But unless you're a house flipper, you'll be able to find a house in good condition for insurance standards. Insurance is definitely higher than the national average, but again, it depends where you are coming from because it may have been more where you are coming from. A typical three bedroom home with no pool will be anywhere from 1,800 to 2,500 a year to insure. A four bedroom house with a pool will be anywhere from 2,800 to 3,700 a year. If we couldn't get insurance, everyone and their brother would be leaving and they're not, they're coming here. So while we do face those challenges, these are things to take into account as we talk about cost of living. I think it's very important to start with housing because depending on where you're moving from, Merritt Island still looks like a ridiculous value to some of you and to others, maybe you lived in the area and you've been here for the last 10 years and you've watched your real estate go up almost 60% and your salary has it, and now all of a sudden it looks unaffordable, which I completely understand. Mirror Island is higher than the national average for home prices. The national median single family home price in the United States costs 412,000. In Merritt Island, that number is 505,000, so it's higher on the national average. This isn't a pros and cons video, otherwise I would go over why the area has a higher value due to location and accessibility to the rivers, and ocean, but they'll be linked below for that. Okay, the difference is in where our healthcare cost is lower, our grocery cost is lower, and you don't have a personal income tax here. These are things that affect the overall affordability, but it's worth noting that it has been climbing. In fact, one and a half percent since last year. At the end of the day, inflation in the United States has affected that, as well as people relocating here, where their dollar can go further down here. What I would love to do is get into these numbers here and share them with you. So what I wanted to do is jump inside of salary.com and show you what's going on with the cost of living. Right now it says that Merritt Island is 2.3% lower than the national average, which is great. And that takes into things like transportation, food, housing, and then the consumer price index. The most expensive areas in the country are San Francisco at 86.5% above the national average, Washington DC 45.2% above, Miami 15.4% above, and I'm not going to read this whole list here, but you can kind of see as it goes along and then it talks about the cost of living here in Merritt Island. So our energy costs are about 12.9% lower than the national average. Our food is about 13.4% lower, Healthcare is 22% below the national average. Housing is about 8.9% lower, and that takes into account condos, rent prices, and not just single family homes like the numbers I gave earlier. Transportation is about 10% less than the national average. Now our cost of living compared to some of these other cities I mentioned earlier is drastically lower. And I wanted to make note of this because we're getting a lot of phone calls from people looking to move from cities on that list. And this is the reason why, because their money goes so much farther. Next on our list is wildlife and bugs. But first, if we've never met before, my name is Rachel Langley and I make videos that are all things about Merritt Island and the Space Coast and what it's like to live here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a real estate agent and I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest in the Space Coast. So if you're into this kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. And if you're considering making the move, we can help you with that too. And you may be moving from a place or considering moving from a place where you have snakes and alligators and palmetto bugs and all kinds of crazy wildlife outside. But I moved from the Northeast and we didn't run into pests as much as it's possible to down here. The roaches around here are quite something. They're often referred to as palmetto bags, but let's be real, they're just good old fashioned cockroaches. It seems someone decided to give them a more pleasant sounding name to avoid scaring folks, but these critters are not only sizable, oh, there's a rocket going up right now, Space Coast Life. All right, back to the video. And these critters are not only sizable, but also capable of flying. 
which can be quite unnerving. They have wings and a knack for flying dead, which can be rather annoying. That's why I'd strongly recommend considering regular pest control services to keep those unwanted guests at bay in your home. Additionally, it's crucial to be mindful of termites as they can wreak havoc on structures. When purchasing a new home, a thorough pest inspection is a must. Your monthly pest control visits can also help spot any potential termite issues early on. Now let's talk about geckos or Annelies. These little creatures occasionally make their way into the house. While they might catch you off guard, rest assured they are harmless and won't bother you. It's just one of those quirks you'll encounter around here. And speaking of wildlife, we've got our fair share of other critters too, including snakes. While I've only come across a couple of them during hikes and never in my yard, it's always a possibility. Keeping your grass trimmed low can help reduce the chances of encountering snakes in your yard. And of course, it's Florida, so there's also the occasional sighting of alligators in the area. So it's wise to avoid hanging out near creeks or ponds just for fun. Some adventurous folks do go swimming in the rivers, but personally, I'd steer clear. You never know when you might run into a snake or gator in there. Now let's dive into the fourth item on our list, the infrastructure in the age of Merritt Island. Merritt Island's development primarily took place in the 1960s, which means that a lot of the infrastructure carries that aesthetic. It's not always the pristine cookie cutter beauty you might find in places like Vieira, a master plan community close by. This is one of the reasons I personally chose to make Merritt Island my home. I appreciate the fact that not everything looks identical here. There's a certain eclectic old school beach town charm that I love. However, I completely understand the appeal of a brand new city with all the modern conveniences. Vera is awesome too. It really comes down to personal preference. It's worth also noting that not all of Merritt Island is frozen in time. There are newer areas and homes that have been constructed as recently as this year. While many of the properties on Merritt Island do date back to the 1950s and 1960s, there are also more contemporary options like newer homes, condos, and townhomes. The choice is yours. And if you're considering an older home, there are a few things to keep an eye out for, as they can lead to costly repairs. Firstly, cast iron piping is a common feature in homes built around 1975 and earlier, particularly in the slab of the homes. Some properties may have already been upgraded to PVC piping, but it's crucial to determine the type of plumbing that's in place. If it's cast iron, be prepared to have the pipes inspected and potentially replaced in the near future, which can be a substantial expense. Another aspect to consider is the electrical system. In the 1950s and 60s, many homes were equipped with cloth wiring or aluminum wiring, which can pose issues with insurance companies. It's essential to verify whether the electrical has been brought up to today's standards to avoid potential complications. And if you're watching this and all of that sounds horrible, that just may mean that a higher price point might be better for you for a newer built home. Let's talk about the fifth item on the list which is taking the opinions of other people too seriously. I am sure you've seen comments or posts on Facebook that say, go home, Florida is full, or comments from people who hate Florida. If you carry a negative attitude, it tends to follow you around. If you're on the lookout for trouble or negativity, you'll find it anywhere, even in paradise. However, if you're coming to Merritt Island to enjoy the incredible lifestyle it offers, those flip-flop vibes, the laid-back atmosphere, and of course, the abundance of sunshine, then you're in for a treat. Florida is often called the live and let live state, and that's something I truly appreciate. It means that while not everyone may agree with you, they generally leave you alone to live life as you see fit. What I mean is you're going to hear a lot of negativity about what it's like to live here, but you'll also hear a lot of positivity from people like me. Of course, Florida isn't perfect. I'm not trying to paint an overly rosy picture here, but I'm sharing these insights because I believe that not every place is a perfect fit for everyone. Not everyone is the same. Personally, I've fallen in love with Merritt Island in the surrounding area, and we have no plans to leave. The benefits, in my opinion, far outweigh any downsides. The relationships we build, the quality of life we enjoy, and the absence of personal income tax are just some of the reasons we've made Merritt Island our home. When people ask me the biggest difference between Merritt Island and other places, I often say I don't have to shovel my driveway every winter in the freezing weather. And that matters to me. It has a positive impact on my mood and my overall way of life. We spend so much more time outdoors and I believe you will too. If you have any questions about moving to the area 
relocating, or investing here, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm a licensed real estate agent here specializing in relocation, and it'd be my pleasure to assist you with yours. You'll find all my contact information down below, including a link to my calendar where you can schedule a call. I enjoy walking people through different cities in the Space Coast and sharing my perspective to help match the right community and city with your ideal lifestyle. It's one of my favorite things to do because of this YouTube channel, and I'd be thrilled to do it with you as well. No matter how you choose to contact me, whether it's a phone call, text message, email, or a DM on Instagram, people do it all the time, don't hesitate to reach out. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so you'll be notified every time we release a new video like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.